Hi everyone, this is Bob with CellTechProductions.com. Today, I have a video for you on mix bus processing. So let's get started. Now I used to put processing like a master bus compressor or a master EQ on my stereo out or master bus. You could call this your mix bus because everything in your mix is rooted out this master. Then a few years ago, I changed my process to rooting everything, well, almost everything, to an aux track. Well, let me back up a step. I also create aux tracks to group-like instruments, drums, bass, guitar, everything I can. This makes mixing easier and faster. Let me show you what I have here. I'll pull up my mixer. I have three drum tracks here. These are uh, MIDI drums, and I have a sample and a shaker. And all three of these go out bus 21, which is my drum bus. Over here, it says drums. So you can see bus 21 is the input on this aux track. And if I solo this, you get my drums and my shaker. Then I have two bass tracks here. I have a bass DI and a bass amp. And if you look here, it goes out bus 26. If you come over here, the input to this aux track, bus 26, is my bass. So if I sell it up, all right, both bass tracks are there. So you can see where I'm going here. I have 19 individual tracks here, and they all bust down to these aux tracks. So I have six faders for mixing now. So I just kind of do a rough mix, which is what I have right now. So now I can... Uh, fine-tune this mix just by going in here and manipulating these six faders controls my entire mix. So I have an organ track. It's a couple of tracks of organs. I think I have about five uh, electric piano come in and out at various times. I mix them all with one here. And you hear that synth track included in there. Then you have these background vocals. And then all of my guitars go to one track. So the entire mix now. Then I output these grouped instruments to bus 20. Bus 20, here's the input for bus 20, becomes my mix bus. For the purpose of this video, we are going to refer to this as the mix bus. And just to be clear, the mix bus signal flow is then into the master, which Logic calls the stereo out. And then this master flows into your speakers. So you may be asking yourself, why do I need a mix bus? My mix still ends up going out this master anyway. So why do I want to create this extra step? Now you may come up with several reasons why you would want to do this or not do this, but here's my take on it. I do some mix bus processing, or you may hear it referred to as top-down mixing. This is where I apply some processing on the entire mix. This provides some cohesion or glue for the entire mix. It's a quicker way to mix and you are processing the entire mix using broader strokes versus surgically processing individual tracks. This instantly makes my mix sound more polished while I'm working things out. A little bit can go a long way here now, so easy does it. Remember, you are affecting the entire mix. Let me show you what I've done so far. So I have my six group tracks that I'm going to be mixing. This is the entire mix right here. And here's my mix bus. My mix bus has some processing on it. So let me just turn all of that off and I'll show you what I'm doing one by one. I'll start with the linear EQ. So you can see I'm just, I'm rolling off some of the low end. Found a few problem frequencies in that uh, mid-range, and then I boost a little bit of 10K for some air. So here's what that sounds like with it on and off. Mm -hmm. 
so it just cleans up the mix a little bit. Then I'm using this uh, SSL bus compressor. Here's with it off. And now on. As you can see, I'm just touching that a bit. Next up is this Pultec EQ. I boosted a little bit of the bottom, boosted a little bit of the top. Here's with it off. Now on. And then I just put, um, put a limiter on here just to bring the volume up a little bit. Slip it off. Now on. Now let me turn them all off again. And now back on. Now the whole point of showing you this is because if I do this processing on the master or the stereo out, if I put all these plugins over here, and you can see the only plugin I have is this loudness meter, so it doesn't affect the mix. But if I put all of those plugins on the stereo or master out, I have left myself no options later if I decide not to process one of the tracks with the master bus plugins. By creating a mix bus, I can send a track to the master bus and then it will bypass the mix bus plugins. Well, why would I want to do that? Well, I may want to do this if I have a sample. For example, this snare sample here. Maybe I have already EQ'd it and compressed it and I have it in such a way I don't want to alter this drum sample further because I already like the way it sounds. So I just want to bypass the mix bus. I can go over here instead of sending it to the mix bus now, I can send it to the stereo out where I don't have any plugins. And by leaving the master output unaffected allows me to use a reference track. I wouldn't want to put a commercially produced reference track through my mix bus process. It will change the sound of the reference tr track, defeating the whole purpose. The same goes for any comparisons or rough mixes that I may have that I want to reference while I'm mixing. And then Pro Tools is another issue. If you're using Pro Tools, um, you might want to do this because Pro Tools plugins are post fader on the master bus. You may not want that. For you Logic users, I'll put this template on our website at celltechproductions.com. And this will give you a good starting point. Go to the registered users area, and in the left menu, you'll see the download. So there you go, guys, a great way to organize your mix for mix bus processing. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm looking forward to your comments and questions on this one. Please hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.